All right, everybody, episode 372 of Global From Asia. We're talking about certificates, testing, labs for your products, your e-commerce here in China with experts on the ground, local people here. This is what we're trying to do here at Global From Asia. Let's tune in. Welcome to the Global From Asia podcast, where the daunting process of running an international business is broken down into straight up actionable advice. And now your host, Michael Michelini. Just me on the intro today. Wow, it's actually Aubrey's birthday today. <laughs> Happy birthday, Aubrey. I don't know if you agree with me, but she's amazing. She's been doing great with her GFA VIP members. If you're in our membership, you probably have talked to her lately. She's got her passport. We got to get her to China. We got to send her around. You know, I think she's an up and coming star here in the community. So keep it up, Aubrey. Happy birthday. Enjoy. So I'll just do this intro on my own today. And we are rocking and rolling here with the Excalibur Brothers brand case study here at Globe Asia using our new blimp method. And today's session, we bring with us an expert in supply chain and testing, Nelson Shao. He's also a listener and he's also a GFA VIP subscriber or member. So thank you, Nelson, for your support. We had met in person. I haven't been able to meet. I had to do this recording in online because we're locked down here. I mean, it's still, I've been like over two weeks locked down, actually in my buddy's apartment. And there's a long story to this. Maybe in the outro, I'll share. All right. If you're curious about my lockdown story, after this meaty interview where we dive into certifications and testing and labs in China for your e-commerce product or any kind of product with some price insights and tips of ways to save money and time, we will talk about my lockdown story in a blah, blah, blah session. All right. Enjoy this session 372 with Nelson. And thank you to our sponsor, our returning sponsor, Mercury.com online bank. Well, it's a real bank, but you can do it totally online for U.S., our Blimp program participants are going through this as well. Thank you, Mercury. Travis is great there. He's been on our show. He's been in our events. We're going to have another event where we will have them attending as well. And if you want to get a little bonus for you and us, if you sign up and do some special circumstances, you can go to globalformasia.com slash Mercury. I also have a video tutorial that we use even for the Blimp people. I use the same exact video to learn how to use it. I hope you can check it out. Totally free. Why not? See you there. All right. Thank you, everybody, for a Global From Asia podcast tuning in today. Still in the same background as last week, last show. I'm still locked down since the last podcast, and that was two weeks, two weeks ago. So, you know, Nelson, uh, it's great to have you. Aubrey, of course. Aubrey, our co-host here and community manager. Thanks for being here, Aubrey. Thanks as well, Mike. As usual, it's our pleasure to be on your show. Yeah, it's our show. It's our show. Uh, it's a community show. And we're trying our best to include everyone in the community. So today, Nelson Shao. Nelson, I believe you've been oh. listening to the podcast for quite some time from what I've what you've told me and the e-commerce gladiator story with the Satano and the Mocha Pod. And you, you know, we met for the first time in December at the Nao Shenzhen launch relaunch party. And it was a great to see you there. We've met a couple times since, and uh, you're also in our GFA VIP membership. So that's really awesome too. Thanks for supporting today, Nelson. So do you mind just introducing yourself for our listeners today? Oh, sure. Yeah. Okay. First of all, it's really the honor, you know, to be invited here. So this is really the first time I, I'm doing the podcast with Michael. It's really, it's a great time, I hope. I believe we will have the good time today. Yeah, I have been working like for, you know, a US company, UK company for four company over 15 years. So all of these years, you know, at the beginning, I, my major focus is focus on the, you know, the product testing, quality inspections and the factory quality system audits. And uh, that is my uh, major task for my, for the first seven or eight years. So after that, I'm starting, you know, focusing on the almost the whole whole thing. You know, for example, it's, if the US team, you know, designed the products they wanted to, you know, produce in China. So my first my first job is to, you know, find the right factories to give us the right price. And then I need to follow 
start from that point, and then once they meet the samples, I need to follow the productions and check it the product quantities, and then make sure the product can ship to US to Europe uh, timely. So this is basically what I'm doing right now. Awesome. Yeah, yeah I think a lot of listeners are going to learn a lot from your insights today. It's great. And sure. also not love to share it. Mm-hmm. expertise will be very useful to the community. So uh, let's make this uh, interactive and let's go to um, our new public case study, which is the Excalibur Brother brand. So we're also new, using a new strategy, which is the Blimp method. I hope uh, you've already known about that because you have uh, mentioned that before. So we have four products being developed and preparing to launch now. We're excited. So let us go through them. And can we discuss some of your uh, QA sites? Sure, sure. So, yeah, you know, basically uh, the QA, you know, we, we, let's put it this way, okay? Each time if we have the, uh, if you were, for example, if my team, our company has the new projects, new program, get started, uh, QA, oh, you know, the role will get involved at the very beginning since the product start designing because we really need, you know, working with the designers at the very beginning point to, you know, give the designers the the head size and what's the specific, the, you know, the the safety issues. Because for each of the countries like the U.S., U.K., different countries, they have a different uh, safety requirements. So we need to get involved, the QA stuff, QA saying to get involved at the very beginning to, you know, unearn the designers, what is the specific safety issues need to be taken care of, to, to need to be uh, start considering, right? Uh, so, so the, yeah, yeah, you know, based on the dif- different type of products, different countries, you're going to have the different, uh, you know, specific requirements. Yeah. All right. Well, I think it's perfect then. We're still in the development stages of these first four products. So I think maybe today we'll get some even new insights and people can learn at the same time. The the first product we're building is a uh, polishing cloth for wine glasses. So I I don't have it because of the lockdown physically with me. Can't receive samples here, but it's it's essentially a, a microfiber cloth that you can dry your glass with to make it very you know clean and no spots so it's from a dongguan factory being produced starting production i think they're ordering materials right now so what's the major the main main materials is fabric textile uh it's polyester yeah textile uh, uh, yeah, polyester Okay, so it's just for the major purpose, the major function is to dry the wine glass, right? Yeah, the main purpose is drying a glass, yeah. It's like, uh, you know, it's very soft, you know, and stretches, it stretches so that, and it's long, so that you can hold it, the bottom of the glass and the top of the glass with the cloth, so you don't use your fingers when you're touching it at all. Okay, okay. Okay, so I guess uh, giving your, uh, what do you have said? The major point we need to focus is, is the, uh, this, the uh, strings, you know, the fiber, the fiber strings, because if you, we can imagine, right? These, these products to join the wine class. So after that, the, the user are gonna to wash it, right? Yeah, talking about the washing, the, f- the first point we need to consider is the, the you have the color on the on the plotters. You cannot the color fastness needs to be stay good, right? You cannot after wash, you know, all of the color, you know, gonna get in stay. That's also uh, one of the major point needs to be considered. So after that is the is the screens, you know, because you, you can, we cannot you know just simply use the plotters one word several times. You know, you start uh, cracking, right? So this uh, for this kind of products, basically, this two things need to watch, right? It's the color fastness, and the second thing is the, you know, how strong the, f- the fiber content is, because uh, if you, I'm not sure if the this if this product you just mentioned gonna send it to the send it to the third party to be tested or not. If we, 
need to test them to the testing lab to test it. So the strings, the, the uh, fiber condenser strings, is absolutely one of the things will be tested. So this, yeah, this yeah, I mean, thing. one of our community members has experience selling this product in the past, so we have a little bit of an advantage um, with this factory. He has a relationship already with this this factory, but it's true we should get a even even still additional test as well for the strength and other other requirements. Yeah, I also definitely agree to that as well. Durability is a must, and also it must be soft enough, right? so that our uh, customers will be happy with that product. So I believe uh, we can go proceed to our next product, the leather glasses cases. I think in this case, uh, you will put your reading glasses into it. Also, maybe sunglasses if they prefer for a rough and masculine look and feel. It's kind of cool. So for leather, any tips or insights on that one? Sorry, I didn't hear clearly. What was the product specifically? Could you say it again? It's a leather glass case. So you put your ear glasses, uh, Nelson, you have your glasses, you can put them in this case. It's made of cow, cow skin leather, cowhide leather material. Okay. It's, it's a glass uh, little case, right? Not as a glass. Not the glasses, just the just the container to uh, protect it when you're not using them, maybe at sleep or okay. you take them off. Okay, so yeah, this uh, is also I think if this one, I uh, hope the major uh, thing we need to focus is the, uh, you know, the the, the uh, you know this container is gonna have the cover right, put the glass in and then close it right. So this the major thing is the. Is a live test. Is a uh, you know the need it gonna be closed, open, open, close it, op close it, open. So this, so usually yeah we have similar we have the similar products before. So, so you know we test. This is one of the very common regular tests to test is how how good the the car is gonna be. So usually you test the uh, you know keep closing and opening like two hundred times to see how good it is. So this is one of the major performance tests for this kind of products. So, uh, yeah, as you described, I just can, you know, and can tell this is one of the major tests. And another thing, this is a performance test, right? For the safety issues, yeah, as I mentioned, it's all our products is quite similar. You just need to consider all of the heavy metal contents, this sort of the issues, like the total net or something like this, yeah. You need to be uh, at the beginning to mention to the factory suppliers to to make sure all of the uh, if there are any you know coating or oh, yeah another thing is you know uh, so you as you mentioned the the material is a uh, is a co hybrid right am yeah, I listening cow, right cow like yeah cow hide or the cow skin like leather material from an animal. Okay, yeah, yeah, this is kind of a specific uh, material. If also, again, in, you want to send the products to be tested. Another major test you will be testing, which is for the, for phallic, phallic contents. Have you ever heard about that? No. Maybe I, I can text you. It's, a, it's quite a, it's a chemical, uh, chemical test to, to test is there any, you know, this is this a real, I mean, is this a man-made material or just the real? Of course, there's the poly PU, but we want the real uh, animal leather. We don't want the plastic polyurethane. We want the genuine top, you know, from a cow. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, right. As you mentioned, it some, somehow it has a little bit PU uh, included, right? So for the PU part. So one of the major tests is, let me test you here. They call fairly content. Oh, wow, that's a long one. Yeah, I, Aubrey, can well, you put that in the show notes, maybe? In the, in the, in the, some people that are interested, P-H-T-H-A, Fatalite, Fatalite content, interesting. Fairly content, yes, it's one of the chemical, uh, chemical factors. You know, stuff. Okay. 
Interesting. Yeah, this is great. I mean, I, and I hope, you know, the point of this is also for listeners to understand the thought process of each product and what to consider. So the third product is a shot glass, you know, like drinking a, a shot of alcohol or Baijiu something. And <laughs> it's, it's in a bamboo wood holder. So it's six, six shot glasses with a uh, bamboo wood holder to hold mm -hmm. the glasses together. So the whole, whole set is including the wine glass and the bamboo holder. Is yeah, right? the shot glass and the bamboo wood. It's it's seven pieces, okay. six glasses and one holder. Wow, this is uh, <laughs> sounds like a great products. Yeah, we <laughs> glass, have. wine glass and the bamboo holders. Yeah. Okay, for the for the glass of our wine apart. One glass part, you know, this, the major test, I uh, let me also uh, text you, is thermal shock test, okay? It basically is, the, because as we, we can easily understand, the wine class is generally is to hold the wines, right? Maybe sometimes the consumer who use the, the, the use the glass, the wine glass to, Okay, let me let me show you the what the specific test is. It is. Yeah, thermal shock test. Okay, uh, Aubrey will also add that to the notes for people to uh, read. For shock. all of the, particularly for the uh, glass, you know, glass cups, this is a very important and common test. You know, uh, okay, it's a good one. Let me show you. I just have the one of those glass sure. over here. Oh, yeah, there you go. You got your exactly, the wine cup, right? Because you know, usually we we use <laughs> we use the cup to hold the, the water. Particularly, sometimes most of the times we use the, the, the hot waters, right? The warm waters. So we have to be to be sure, you know, if, if you know if some uh the customer use the use the cups to put some hot waters in into it, if the quantity is not good, it could be breaks immediately and yeah. uh, hurt hurt the hurt the hands right so so this is basically how these tests test it you know I you know they, they put some hot waters into the uh, lab for one or two minutes and then take take out the hot water and then immediately put some cold waters into the cup to see how the glass can be react. Mm. So this is how basically this test uh, to test it. Nice. Thank you so much, Nelson. Sure, sure. And for the bamboo part, in the holder part, I would say, is this is the real bamboo, natural bamboo? They say so, yeah. I mean, we're, we have a sample. I haven't seen it yet, but they say it's re real bamboo wood. Yes. Uh, why I'm asking this? Because, yes, we do have the similar products. Actually, I have to say for my company, a lot of the uh, products, they have the natural material effects on the surface, but actually it just looks like the natural materials, but actually it's not. It just puts the, the paper on, on the surface. The paper printed the uh, wooden uh, wing or just makes it looks like the real, okay, if the bamboo holder is already using the natural bamboo, so yeah, let me tell you, it's one of the things, one of the things is absolutely need to be uh, tested, which is the first step is need to make sure the, the very common quality issue for the natural uh, material is if the, if the moisture content is not, is not at the, at the right level, it could easily get, get the moves. Moisture contents. Moisture content. Okay. Yes. If the moisture content is not at the right level. Well, it could easily get the uh, get this. Oh, uh, the mold. Yeah, mold. Yes. All right. So, yeah, this is one of the things uh, for the natural materials. We absolutely need to be. It's a, it's it's a critical, you know, for natural materials. Makes sense. Thanks, Nelson. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Alpen Nelson, about that. So, I think we can proceed through our last product which is the drinking flask so our first final product for the first batch of our blimp method participants 
We will come with uh, two metal shot glasses and also in a nice box. So we want the casing of the flask to be leather as well. And yeah, we're still finalizing about that with the factory. So any comment on how to quality check a flask? Yeah, it's stainless steel 304. And, and we'll have a leather, also leather. We want to have real leather case around the metal. Okay, for the for the nether part, I just mentioned the right. The, uh, yes. the this is yeah. one of the uh, critical part, uh, critical test. For the metal parts, okay, it's, uh, so is the metal gonna be exposure outside or gonna be gonna be covered by the nether? Uh, the majority will be covered by leather, but there will be the top and the bottom exposed to the air. Okay, so and then for the metal part, okay, let me. Text you is one of the nice. core. Yeah, it's rusty resistant test, right? For the flask. yes, for the for the uh, metal uh, parts, metal components. The this is a really common uh, critical test. Yeah, I think people are familiar with rust, right? So rust is when, especially metal, gets older or wet, and you know it it corrode. It's corroded. Corro, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. You mentioned the right word. Some. Most corrosion. of them say it's corrosion, corrosion yeah. resistance. Yeah, so that's definitely corrosion something. Resistance. Corrosion, corrosion resistance, and uh, rust resistance. Exactly. So, of course, with metal, nobody wants something that corrodes and gets like, you know, like uh, flakes, and then you know gets creaky. Obviously, you know, especially you know, unfortunately, Chinese made products have bad some bad reputation for this, right? So we want to make sure the products that anybody sells is uh, top quality and uh, won't rust or corrode uh, over time as, you know, to, to be used and, and, and clean and uh, helpful. So for sure, that's a test that needs to be ensured is passed for this product. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. Another few things for the metal parts. Let me, let me test to you this. This is really very important for the metal parts is, and it could easily, you know, generate this kind of issues, sharp point and sharp edges. Mm, it's very... Sharp edges and sharp corners. Yeah. yeah sharp. Yes. Yeah. Like, especially if it could hurt or cut, but not just hurt. It's just rough, right? It's not feeling yes, smooth. Yes. It mm, feels right. cheaper if it's, if it's sharp and rough and rough. So to make sure the right. edges are, are, are rough, are, are, are smooth. Okay, this is great, Nelson. So we went through the four products that we're starting for this first batch of Amazon sales with the Blimp Method using the Excalibur Brothers brand and case study. So I really appreciate that. I think I, I, listeners, I, I know I did, I'm sure Aubrey got some ideas. You know, each product, as you can tell, has different types of requirements and tests, depends on the material, right? Depends on the type of product, the country you're selling in. So what you know, what we're planning to do is, you know, send them to a one warehouse in China and then have them prepped and checked. But I'd love your feedback, you know, like, and I think uh, Aubrey and I could send you more information to Nelson and I'm sure for listeners too. So you say as soon as possible, the QA person should know about the product and the requirements, right? Before it's made. Yes. Okay. First of all, I, I let me emphasize. Uh, okay. Big, all of the the things uh, I just tested. It's just a very uh, basic and some of the key tests. Okay. So I, I would say uh, I really think you know, Michael, you organize this. Uh, you know, each you organize some of the uh, global from Asia you know, members share the experience. I think this is pretty good. I think uh, for me, what I can share is, you know, yes, maybe later on. You know, different members, they are, they have the uh, different products, right? If they like, just, you know, list uh, what's their major products, put in the global firm Asia, and later on, I can review review them one by one, yeah. and then I could uh, very detailed need to list out for each product, uh, what is the uh, major key task uh, or needed to be taken care of. I think awesome. we can help help each other sharing, you know, each other's uh, backgrounds, experience, that's Let's see great. how it could benefit each other, right? That's so helpful, Nelson. Thank you, really. I'm sure the members will really appreciate that. And uh, we'll make sure 
on the show. And of course, in the community, we'll let them know. I guess one thing maybe that's worth adding to this discussion today is cost, costs for these tests and time for these tests. I know the cost could change and the time could change. It's the 20, year 2022 right now, and maybe it'll go up or down. Can you give us some ideas of how much the cost would be for these tests and to how long it should take? Uh, Brock, if, if you're uh, able to, that'd be really great. Sure, sure. You know, yeah, every day we have been, you know, sending the positives to the third part test lab doing the test. Yeah. Okay. First of all, the, for the testing cost, let me see, it depends. Okay. If uh, if your products just uh, send it to this uh, big retainers like Amazon, Walmart, or Target, these big retainers, they do, you know, these big retainers, they, they assign their uh, a specific third party testing lab, which is usually this, uh, this testing lab, their testing cost is quite high. Mm. So, but uh, if your products is not sending, it's just, you know, send, it's sending under your own brand and uh, the customer doesn't have any specific requirements. So basically, you, you just need to test some uh, regular, uh, you know, tests. Like for, for, those, for these products, I would suggest you, you don't need to send to the big, you know, companies, big uh, test, third-party testing companies. There, you know, in China, it has a lot of the uh, smaller, you know, local it's, it's still quantified, you know, testing apps, which is the testing cost is much cheaper and the testing time is much faster. So that's the, the first suggestion I would give. Okay. I mean, can we just say a thousand dollars or RMB or uh, $500, $2,000, you know, like what's kind of an expectation a range. Let me I let mean, me give you give you a, a very specific example. Okay, one of the very common tests is heavy metal, heavy metal content test. This is a very common test. Okay. No matter what's what's your products will be sending to Europe or uh, US. So this is a very common test. Okay, for this specific test, if you if you uh, like send uh, sending to Walmart or Target, these are big retainers. They then they, they will require you send the product to specific NAPs, which is the uh, approach, the authorized. Mm. For the for, like you probably know, you see SGS, Intertech, yeah, Inter or BV. Was the, these these three or this one? One more. These four are big four across the world. It's, it's a very famous international third-party testing companies. So usually for the bigger retainers, they use this, this four, right? So for example, the heavy metal content test, if you send the products to this four, usually it will cost you for one for this one single test, it will cost you uh, 500 to 1000 USD. But if you just send to, you know, the no code lab, the smaller one, you will be uh, 40% cheaper. Mm, great insights. Yeah. So okay. overall, it's, it really depends what your customer is, right? Or is there, do you, does your customer have specific uh, lab? Um, they want you send your products to the specific labs. If your if your pro, a customer doesn't have any you know specific lab, and then we can send it to the no cost monitor labs, which which is first of all the co the cost is much cheaper and the testing time is much faster. That's really great. This is great. Thanks, Nelson, for those. You know, we get some ideas of cost and price differences between large or smaller solutions. Awesome. Uh, thank you so much, Nelson. So again, really happy to have you here on our show. And thank you again for being GFA VIP member. We appreciate you in the community. So how can people find you and connect with you? Maybe you can uh, suggest for your socials and such. And 
we can definitely find you in our GFA VIP community, right? So. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's right. Just one of the way you can find me. Okay, another way is just uh, okay. My I'm gonna put my phone number. Also, is my WeChat ID. We could put it on the show notes if you're okay with that. Sometimes it might it might change, yeah. you know, or such. But okay, Aubrey, we'll we'll keep that and we'll connect people that need to Aubrey, right? So that's awesome, Nelson. Thank you. thank you so much. And again, yeah, like Aubrey said, thank you for you know being active in our community and supporting with the membership and and sharing some really amazing insights today. I really appreciate it. Sure, sure. No problem. It's absolutely always an you know, honor to, you know, come here. We can share some experience, you know. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm following. Just recently, I kind of busy, you know, having to follow your podcast for a while yet, but I will catch up for sure. No problem, no problem. I know we're all, we're all kind of going through a huge... The whole world right now yeah we're all going through adjustments so it's totally understandable thank you again nelson and uh, we'll talk soon sure. thank you nelson this has been great you know i think this is actually going back to what global from asia was meant to be about we're trying to get local experts in the community not just you know good english speaking native english speaking people from the western here but actually local chinese people local people in asia like in thailand or philippines and bringing them on the show that's really what I think was always about. I know the show started about Hong Kong business, which is under huge pressure right now. But, you know, it's about global from Asia, you know, Asia business globally. So, you know, I hope you enjoyed that one with Nelson. And, you know, we're trying to give you really insights you can't find elsewhere. Let's talk about my lockdown. I am here in my buddy Dave's place in Shenzhen. It's a nice little, nice big place. So that's been nice. Hope I don't break my camera now and i had to didn't have to come here i was in my apartment in shenzhen my wife went to a buddhist uh, funeral for one of her masters in the west of china near tibet you know i support her there of course it was a bit hard she knew it would be hard for two kids with me and all this stuff i do <laughs> in my work i love so her my daughter went to see her aunt or my wife's sister and the, my son Miles came here to David's uncle, David, Godfather David's, and I was able to work on my own. But then just a couple days later, there was a lockdown in David's place here because it's right next to Hong Kong. Hong Kong is right over there. So I think they uh, sent a foreigner, which I believe was a Hong Kong taxi driver, didn't follow quarantine and spread it, every, spread it started spreading it. So they are super serious here and super strict. So they just lock everything down that has a potential of spreading. I think it wasn't this apartment compound, but in this neighborhood, there's a village next door. So they locked it down. All right. And then I could have stayed free outside of this, but my son was here and Miles is, you know, seven, going to be eight. And it's a lot of work. So... Plus, you know, I was kind of going to get locked down in my place, so I just had to come here and willingly get locked down to support, you know, taking care of Miles and being with my son and my, my one of my best friends and also a partner at Now Shin Shin. We had an interview. Also, Luciano our, is also a roommate here. So it was a great chance to get a lot of work done with Excalibur Brothers and Now Shin Shin and work and be with my son. So we were locked down here. He is finally, after two weeks, has been able to leave, but can't come back. So I'm staying here because I can't come back here, and the internet doesn't work so well in my apartment. And it's a bigger place here. So I'm running an online conference for Handshake next week, and I just don't want to risk the online event not being smooth. So I'm sticking out another week here on my own. But then actually my, my family's apartment where I'm supposed to be is also locked down now. And you can't re-enter enter unless you're a resident and prove with residents, you know, registering with the police. So that's why I can't come back here unless I was registered with the police and change my address to David's place from where I am. Very complicated, very strict, very, you know, I'll just keep it at that. And then we'll just see how this, this virus in China goes of this new variant. I mean, it's over two years now, but we have to stay strong. We have to stay positive. And we will come out of this stronger. So thanks for listening or watching. And I wish you the best health and safety first. Cheers. 
To get more info about running an international business, please visit our website at www.globalfromasia.com. That's www.globalfromasia.com. Also, be sure to subscribe to our iTunes feed. Thanks for tuning in.